Oshkosh Media is. Government programming on GovTV, community programming on Life TV, and community radio on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Welcome to the City Manager's Report. A look at city updates and a preview of the next Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. Thanks for joining us for this edition of the City Manager's Report. I'm Andy Raddick, and in a moment, we'll be joined by City Manager Mark Roloff. As usual, in the first half of today's show, we'll have some muni municipal news updates, including information from city departments and news that residents can use. In the second half, we'll highlight items from the upcoming Tuesday, March 26th, Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. And with that, we bring in our city manager, Mark Roloff. Mark, thank you for joining us today. Great to be here, Andy. All right, well, we've got another edition of the show here today, and we have a lot of interesting information. Uh, we always talk about when we have a new department head joining us at the city, and we have a new department head joining us in the finance department. Yeah, we're really excited. Uh, Julie Kelmis has been our assistant finance director uh, with the city for the past year and she will now be our new finance director. Uh, Julie has a great deal of experience in municipal finance. She was previously a finance director for the town of Grand Chute and in total she has like 17 years of finance experience so mm -hmm. we're very fortunate to have that that level of uh, experience coming to us. And of course uh, Julie takes the reins uh, from Russ Van Goppel who is retiring after five years of service to the city. We're going to miss Russ but we're certainly happy to have Julie take his place. So uh, finance uh, covers a variety of yeah. things. So collections, utility accounting, uh, parking administration, uh, general accounting, payroll, finance, you know basic finance things but uh, Julie is certainly up to the task and uh, look forward to having her as part of my management team. Mm -hmm. Well, we certainly welcome Julie on board and we also uh, wish well to uh, wish uh, Russ very well in his retirement and uh, he's done some great things for us here too. Yeah, we uh, Russ has actually been uh, in the public sector for over 40 years, so he's got a great deal of experience as both a finance director and a city manager. So yeah, we're gonna miss Russ, but uh, Fortunately, we have somebody of Julie's caliber to take his place, so I think finance is going to be in good shape. Okay, excellent. All right, well, then we also have uh, a note to pass along that uh, in-person absentee voting is underway for the spring election, and uh, that election is coming up on April 2nd. Uh, but uh, we wanted to note that uh, early voting is not being held at City Hall this year. Right. We wanted to make sure that the daily affairs of the city could continue to go, and there's a... It, gets a lot of activity. So mm -hmm. we've identified this location. It's at the corner of East Irving and Jefferson Street. Um, there's ample parking in the area. Uh, it's, it's a great facility for uh, easy in, easy out. Uh, it's centrally located in the city in general. Uh, it's accessible for ADA purposes, mm -hmm. uh, Americans with Disabilities Act. And it's also easily accessible by public transportation, which was important to us as well. Mm -hmm. And this is where the uh, early voting took place for the uh, spring primary election. Same place. Yeah, same place and it went very well there as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, we're confident it'll be a good location. But mm -hmm. if you come to City Hall to do any of that early stuff, we're going to send you away because we don't have the, the capabilities here. And we're required to let people know where they can vote. This time it's 19 East Irving and the idea is it'll stay that way. This, this was... Uh, uh, rebuilt with this in mind so we're mm -hmm. excited to be able to do that. Sure, sure. And early voting is available at 19 East Irving Avenue on weekdays from 8 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. through Friday, March 29th and on Friday, March 29th also available uh, until 5 p.m. that particular day. Yeah, we give everybody a little chance if they if they uh, get out of work and they need an extra half hour to get over there we'll take care of you that way. Sure. And remember to visit myvote.wi.gov to register to vote or to learn a lot more about your uh, elections and uh, uh, anything you need to know about voting is available there. And please don't forget to bring your photo ID. That's really important for, uh, for you to, to vote. And then uh, we want to make sure that you're eligible to vote. And so uh, mm -hmm. please do that and we'll uh, make sure that you uh, get your opportunity to uh, do your civic duty. All right, very good. 
All right, then we also wanted to make note that the State of the City program is coming around very soon, and we are in a video format this year with, with the program. One of the things we found out was we, we compared the live audience version with how we did with uh, doing some of the video format when it was during COVID when we couldn't do in person. Mm -hmm. And actually, you know, our numbers showed that we had better watching watching on the video format versus in person so mm -hmm. i think we're reaching a wider uh, group of people um and and the more people we can reach the better so uh we're excited about that so we're going to try the video format this year and change it up a few things as well to make sure that we can accommodate that so it's gonna um it's gonna be march 27th premiere at 6 30 p.m of course on all the oshkosh media uh, outlets that that we have Right, right. And, you know, it's more convenient for residents as well. And uh, we'll take a, a behind the scenes look at, at city operations and, and uh, there, there's a lot more interesting information that you'll be able to share. Oh, yeah. I mean, we've got updates on city facilities, development projects, which people are always curious always about. Always curious. And then just outlook, just general outlook for Oshkosh's future. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're excited that we'll be able to to do that as part of this video presentation. Um, I think it's gonna run about a half hour, so uh, if you can give us a little bit, a half hour of your time. If you mm -hmm. can't do it on Wednesday, you can certainly take a look at uh, GovTV and YouTube uh, later on. Right, absolutely. And uh, the awards presentations will actually be presented at the March 26th council meeting, which we'll talk about in a, in a few minutes here. Uh, but that had been part of the in-person event, uh, but those will be presented at the council meeting. Uh, but uh, also just wanted to remind folks that March 27th, 6.30 p.m. is the uh, State of the City uh, premiere. Hope everybody can uh, maybe take a look at it and hear about what's going on. Absolutely, yeah, there's, there's a lot of information in that program. All right. Well, uh, we also wanted to note that the Oshkosh Parks Department currently has a survey open on POCO, and uh, they are looking for citizen input uh, for their future planning. Yeah, we're developing and updating what's called the Comprehensive Outdoor Recreation Plan, also known in short as CORP. Uh, this really, that plan helps direct the future of park and open space opportunities in Oshkosh. Mm -hmm. And it also lays the groundwork that if we're ever applying for grants, uh, the grant uh, agencies typically are looking for this project like parks mm -hmm. to be in their in the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan mm -hmm. so part of it is to make ourselves better eligible for possible grant opportunities mm -hmm. okay and that survey is open through march 31st takes about eight to ten minutes to complete so it's really not not too bad and uh, it's available through the Hot Topics uh, link on the uh, city's website. Uh, and also, uh, if, if folks are already a subscriber to Polco, they should have received uh, an email uh, with a link to it. Yeah, we certainly want input. It doesn't matter if you're across the street from a park or you know it's a few blocks away. We want your input about what we can do to better serve uh, you in terms of our park system. So we're mm -hmm. excited to get this input and we will use it in terms of incorporating that into our uh, eventual plan. Right, right, absolutely. So even if, if somebody is not a regular user of parks, um, really this is for everybody uh, because uh, the parks department would like to hear from everybody even if they don't use parks frequently, they, they need to know. Parks are a huge part of our quality of life. Mm -hmm. And so even if you're not interested, let's say you don't, you don't play tennis or pickleball, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean we don't want your input uh, right. because your input is important for, for us to be able to provide park services to the community that everyone can enjoy, sometimes sooner, sometimes later, but mm -hmm. we want it to be available for everybody. Sure, sure. And speaking of surveys, we also want to point out that uh, citizens should be looking for the annual citizen survey, otherwise known as the National Community Survey, that will be coming out very soon, April 2nd. And uh, that survey will be used to guide future planning for the city. And uh, we'll be talking a lot more about this in our uh, next program, but we just wanted to let folks know to be looking for it and, and that it will be coming around soon. Yeah, we try to keep different surveys active so after the parks mm -hmm. one's done a couple days later we'll open the uh, the one for the annual citizen survey so uh, right. please participate in all of them we'd like to get your input always looking for the input absolutely all right 
Well, uh, coming up on March 30th, we have some family events, and our Oshkosh Parks Department staff have been very busy planning these, and they're also uh, working with uh, Winnebago County uh, for their facility there at Sunnyview Expo Center. Yeah, with uh, all of the uh, construction activity on hold over at Menominee Park with the Pratt Trail road closure, we're mm -hmm. moving uh, these family events uh, to Sunnyview Expo Center. Appreciate the um, assistance of Winnebago County in making these happen. But two events. First one is the Breakfast with the Bunny. Uh, that's early uh, on mm -hmm. March 30th, 8 to 11 a.m. It features pancake, sausage, milk, juice, and coffee. Kids are going to have a blast mm -hmm. decorating cookies, doing crafts, while everyone's favorite bunny, you know who, mm -hmm. will be available for <laughs> photographs with the families. But in this case, Tickets must be purchased in advance, right, Andy? That's right. Uh, no breakfast tickets will be available at the door uh, for that particular event. Uh, but they are available at the Oshkosh Parks Department online service page or at the Oshkosh Parks Department office, which is located at 805 Witzel Avenue. And then after all the breakfast fun, the day continues with our famous annual egg hunt. Uh, it's known as Bunny in the Barn, and it's scheduled from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, and that's where the kids can search the barns for eggs, and uh, they can turn those eggs in for prizes. Uh, so there's all kinds of fun to be had there. Uh, just to note that the uh, tickets for Bunny in the Barn, and that's just the Easter egg hunt uh, part only, uh, will be available at the gate for that event. Uh, but, you know, otherwise tickets are available at uh, for both events uh, online at the uh, Oshkosh Parks Department's online service page or at the Oshkosh Parks Department office, again, 805 Witzel Avenue. Yeah, and if you have any questions about these events coming up on March 30th, please call the Parks Department. Uh, the number is 920-236-5080. That's 236-5080. Okay. All right. Get those tickets and have a good time with, with the family. All right. Then we also wanted to point out that uh, it's that time of year again, uh, although the weather's been kind of wonky lately, but uh, it's time for curbside brush collection, and that begins the week of April 1st. We always love to talk about spring, even if it means yard work. And in this case, the curbside collection of brush is scheduled on your regular garbage day during the first full week of each month. Uh, that doesn't contain a city holiday from April through December. So uh, I believe it's uh, going to be starting what the, uh, is it April? It'll be April 1st because that'll be a full week. That's right. Full week. That's so, right. Mm -hmm. so start on April 1. So, But remember, the brush must be placed either in biodegradable bags uh, or the branches must be bundled and tied. Mm -hmm. That's right. And also just note that the sanitation division does not pick up grass, dirt, root balls, or stumps. So it just needs to be the, um, the uh, other types of things that, that will uh, uh, work with the uh, uh, biodegradable bags. Yeah, so there's lots of details about brush collection if you visit sanitation website on the city's website or just call the sanitation division at 920-232-5383. Right. All right, and then we also just wanted to note, uh, we talked a little bit about the uh, uh, elections and early voting. Uh, just note that uh, Oshkosh Media has covered several candidate forums, and uh, it's great to be able to tune in and uh, uh, watch those so that you can educate yourself about the, the issues and the candidates. Uh, so Oshkosh Media has been working with the League of Women Voters of Winnebago County for over 25 years to provide these forums and uh, uh, watch for them uh, to be available uh, on GovTV as well as on the Oshkosh Media YouTube page. Right, they've already been recorded so really what we're encouraging you to do is watch for the replays between now and April 2nd when there's election day and you, you see all the channels that you can do but uh, you'll see forums for the candidates uh, for the Oshkosh Common Council, uh, the school board, as well as the Winnebago County Circuit Court Branch 1 judge. So mm -hmm. uh, various positions, uh, elected positions and uh, we want you to watch it the same way you watch city manager's report, common mm -hmm. council meetings, all those things. And there they are, Spectrum Channel 10, UVerse 99, mm -hmm. of course, uh, all the other uh, uh, streaming devices, uh, mm -hmm. access that you can get. Absolutely. Try to make it easy for folks. Okay. Well, Mark, I think it's time for us to take a short break and stay with us for some highlights from the upcoming Oshkosh Common Council meeting agenda. We'll be right back.
Welcome back to the City Manager's Report. I'm Andy Raddick along with City Manager Mark Roloff. Let's turn our attention to the agenda items from the upcoming Tuesday, March 26th Oshkosh Common Council meeting. So Mark, at the beginning of the meeting, uh, we have, well, we have some introduction of staff, which we talked about a little bit earlier. And we also have some presentations and you know, we had mentioned with State of the City, we had incorporated these award presentations in State of the City, but since we have a video with State of the City this year, uh, these awards will be presented at this very council meeting on, on March 26th. And those awards include Community Partnership Awards, the Environmental Leadership Award, as well as Citizen Service Awards. Yeah, even though we're not doing the uh, in-person State of the City event, we still felt it's so important to recognize these wonderful partners, uh, volunteers, uh, and, and people who serve on our boards and commissions. Because, mm -hmm. and that's it's the personal touch that really matters. So right. um, we're not going to reveal everybody or anything like that. But the community partner awards recognize individuals or groups that help partner with the city on some very important issues. And we've had some great. Uh, recipients in the past and we got some great recipients this year but you got to wait till Tuesday mm -hmm. uh, before you see those but uh, we're happy to, to do those and then of course our sustainability advisory board mm -hmm. uh, annually does what's called an environmental leadership award right. to recognize somebody who's really done something to advance the cause of sustainability efforts in the city mm -hmm. um, and uh, the committee has uh, selected someone so uh, I think they're, they've given the name to the mayor, and the mayor will announce that as well. That one I don't know yet, so I'll be as surprised as you are, Andy. Right, right, absolutely. We'll find out. And then also the Citizen Service Awards, those recognize citizens who have achieved significant milestones uh, for their years of service on various boards and commissions for the city. Yeah, multiples of five years if you've been 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And we have some, I think, in every category. We've got some great uh, people who have committed a, a lot of time and effort right. uh, to serving on our boards and commissions. Gives great guidance to council. It certainly gives wonderful guidance to me on things that they just give me advice on and I, I take into consideration and I know council does as well. So we're happy to recognize these people. And of course, we're always looking for people, right Andy? Absolutely. We're always looking for, for citizens to step up and serve on these various boards and commissions. Uh, so you can always visit the city's website and take a look at the various boards and commissions and see what might interest you and uh, submit an application and um, and take the process from there to, to participate. All right, well then, Mark, we get into the consent agenda of the uh, upcoming meeting, and we have an item relating to the Oshkosh Police Department, and uh, this is taking a look at uh, uh, their processing of the uh, various body cam footage uh, for those cameras that the officers wear. Yeah, I mean, this has been a wonderful addition. It has improved officer accountability. It's assisted the officers to, to have video evidence of things that they've encountered. Um, but one of the things that we're required to do, which is totally appropriate, is make this available for members of the public who may want to see it themselves. Um, and uh, we have an obligation, even though it's a public record, mm -hmm. we have the obligation to make sure that we don't reveal something that would be inappropriate to, to reveal. You know, think of uh, children's faces or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we've had to spend a great deal of time about every hour of video that we have, we have to uh, spend about an hour and a half to review it and redact things from this video. Mm -hmm. Think if we have a, a, um, an incident with four officers, we're looking at six hours of video, uh, we're spending six hours to look at one hour of video. Mm -hmm. Very time intensive. Right. So we've identified some what's called redaction software that'll assist the staff who has to review that to 
enabled us to more easily redact that information. It's sort of an artificial intelligence type of thing. So we're excited we're going to be able to do that. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, police department, this will make them much more efficient uh, in processing requests for information. Okay, very good. Uh, then we also have, uh, it looks like we're, we're actually purchasing three ambulances. And, and I know that we have to actually uh, do this well in advance because of uh, various issues. The lead time for ambulance units and fire trucks is as long as three years now. Wow. So actually we're asking for permission to buy some ambulance units that we don't actually need until 2027. Mm -hmm. But if we wait till 2027, we won't get them for a few years. So we've actually taken the initiative to order these things in advance so that they will be ready by 2027. So mm -hmm. uh, these are very important. We uh, rotate uh, frontline ambulance vehicles every three years. So they're th um, you know, three years on the front line, three years on the back line, mm. and actually three years in reserve. So mm. we um, make good use of them, but yeah. we have to rotate them on a regular basis. But we can't sit there for waiting for an order to come. So this is what we're doing. We have to plan ahead. Yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, then also uh, we have an exciting project over at the Oshkosh Public Museum, and uh, they are very busy to keep up with changes and to improve their efficiency and everything as well, and they are renovating one of their galleries. Well, they're creating a brand new, the, the roving exhibition is going to be in a different part of the second floor in the museum, and we've already started to clear it out. Uh, and we're going to be actually closing the second floor uh, within the next couple of weeks because the it's going to be now called the Waldwick Gallery. Uh, we're going to be renovating that, and that's where all the traveling or rotating exhibitions that we acquire will go. And that door that you see there is an elevator. It's a it's actually not an elevator. It's a door that opens to the outside, so we can uh, load from with forklifts. Uh, pallets of uh, exhibition material that we get so we can get it in and out much easier and then the staff can put up the displays for these exhibitions. Uh, mm -hmm. It'll make it much more efficient and it will enable us to get more um, in different types of exhibits. So mm -hmm. we're going to get a lot more different types of exhibitions more than we've ever had. So mm -hmm. uh, when this is done, probably around the beginning of 2025, uh, we're going to have a great second floor um, on top of everything else we have at the museum. So I'm excited to, to announce it and excited to see when it gets done. Oh, it's very exciting, and, and we will be keeping an eye on it and keep everyone up to date on what is happening with uh, the uh, renovations over there. Okay, then, Mark, uh, it looks like uh, we have quite a bit of ink on the agenda that is uh, relating to special events. And, you know, we always talk about a few of the various events that are coming up, uh, one of which is the Oshkosh Fourth of July Parade, uh, an annual event that everyone really enjoys. Uh, yeah, I think we have like uh, 12 or 13 events on this agenda alone. So, yeah, the Fourth of July Parade is a wonderful community event. You know, brings everybody together, makes everybody feel great, mm -hmm. uh, and we're excited. It's Oshkosh Media covers it, mm -hmm. um, and it's a great source of community pride. So uh, that's just one example. And another one that I that I like myself because I can walk down from City Hall is mm -hmm. the Live at Lunch series over there on Opera House Square and Market Street. Uh, that's going to begin on June fifth, and it runs through uh, the end of September. So we're excited to be able to have that event as well. So that's just two examples of what I said, I think like 12 or 13 different events that council's approving just at this meeting. So we're very proud of the tradition we have to have some great special events and looking forward to uh, continuing those events into the future. Right, right. Still a lot of events coming up. So we'll, uh, we'll keep folks updated on, on what's going on there as well. Okay, then under new ordinances, we have, uh, we have an item that relates to um, uh, some, some uh, uh, adjustments that need to be made uh, for a new fast food restaurant. Yeah, the, um, this is, uh, it starts with a zone change in this case, and this is over on Washburn, just a little north of 9th Avenue. Uh, the property's going to be rezoned, um, and it's just immediately north of Fire Station 16 and the Water Tower. So it kind of gives you a, a point of reference. But mm -hmm. once it kind of starts getting demoed, everybody's going to be asking. So mm -hmm. we'll give you this little insight so you can say you heard it first. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, you may have seen this uh, restaurant in other places. It's called Freddy's. It's a fast food restaurant with custard and things like that. Um, so it'll be offered there, and it's you know great visibility from 
Interstate 41, mm -hmm. and uh, you know we're excited that you know these national chains see that Oshkosh is a great location to place their business, and so uh, you're going to be see this activity coming up in the next few months. This is just the rezoning to get the pro process started, but eventually they'll go to the plan commission with the specific plans. We don't have anything to show you at this point because nothing's been turned in, but right. we know that that's uh, where they're going right now. So you can say you heard it here first on City Manager's Report. That's right, yeah, Freddy's is coming to Oshkosh. There you so, go. Okay, all right, then Mark, we have several items that are relating to lead service line replacement and um, uh, various things and we're really trying to uh, be able to continue to offer the programs that that uh, help uh, residents financially with these these updates yeah during the break we had that public service announcement that mm -hmm. we're continuously doing to make people aware of you know we want you to look out for potential contamination of lead in, in pipes especially if you have lead service pipes going into your house um, but we do have a program that we received some grant funds for that grant is going away but we know that it's still a very important program so we're looking for some financial resources to continue to provide some financial incentives after the grant funds are gone so uh lead service uh lines are a real concern um you know they it doesn't always mean that you've got a problem in your water but right the sooner you get it replaced the better and we want to give those incentives so uh, we've got a couple ordinance changes that we're going to do as well as uh, the policy that we're doing on lead service line replacement so we can help provide some financial assistance to people so be on the lookout for this we are still going to be actively working on this we're required to do in some cases but we know it's also the right thing to do mm -hmm. and the public works department does have a web page on their uh, on their web page uh, that has a lot more details about lead service line replacement we encourage our residents to to check that out okay then we also have an item uh, for uh, an agreement with uh, theta care and this is the new downtown micro hospital and uh, I, I know mark that they have a groundbreaking coming up on march 26th but uh, uh, so the groundbreaking is actually before this approval takes place well that's a that's a legitimate question and, and a few people have asked us about that um, you have to remember that a, an organization like theta care some of their property is tax exempt while other parts of the property are taxable so the groundbreaking that we're very excited for on tuesday morning mm -hmm. is actually for the hospital itself and that is tax exempt mm -hmm. so that won't generate any property tax dollars but meanwhile they're also proposing to put in a clinic that would be taxable oh. and they that property site remember that's the old Jeldwin site very mm -hmm. old industrial site and those sites in the downtown area have a great deal of contamination and for the hospital and the clinic to be able to go um, they need to address that that very real issue mm -hmm. the reality is is whether it's uh, this project with a great hospital and a clinic or it's something else mm -hmm. that cleanup's going to have to happen and mm -hmm. virtually in every case along the river we've provided some type of assistance either with if we owned it we'd lower the price of the land down mm -hmm. to you know one dollar or in this case we don't own the land but they've they've purchased it and they need some assistance to take care of the environmental contamination so mm -hmm. uh, that will be funded through a tax increment financing development agreement for the taxable portion and assuming this gets approved by the council then they'll start planning for the taxable portion of the construction project okay all right so there's a lot of moving parts with with the whole thing but uh we we're, we definitely are looking forward to this new development coming to downtown absolutely okay well mark i think we're about out of time but we really appreciate your insights on all these items and uh we'll be uh uh, looking for updates uh, when we get to the meeting on Tuesday. It's always a pleasure, Andy. All right, and thank you for joining us again today. Uh, we appreciate that. Again, that Oshkosh Common Council meeting is at 6 p.m. this Tuesday. That's March 26th at City Hall, 215 Church Avenue. You can watch that live on GovTV, which is Spectrum Channel 10, UVerse Channel 99, and streaming on YouTube and OshkoshMedia.org. Or you can listen on the radio, Oshkosh FM 101.9, which is also on TuneIn uh, radio app for phones and tablets. So again, please join us again in two weeks for another City Manager's Report. Thanks for watching.